What's up, you guys? Today, you're going to learn how to create a feedback loop effect, which you may have heard in dub music or other related genres. Please like and subscribe, and let's get started. I've got a drum loop here that we are going to use for this effect. Okay. First thing is we're going to want to assign it to an insert. And then we will want to send it to an auxiliary track. Once we've got our auxiliary track here, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to open a limiter. Now, what I like to do is we'll unhook it here. That way we're not doubling volume, we're just getting volume coming through the auxiliary channel. That way we can bring the ceiling of our limiter down to our current levels. If it touches it a little bit, no big deal. Now the reason we're doing this is because we're actually creating a feedback loop. So if this runs away from us and gets out of hand, um, this can be very bad for your ears or equipment, depending on your listening levels. And it's just not pleasant. We, we don't want that. So protect yourself, put a limiter on the channel because we don't want those problems. So now that we've done that, we will add a delay. You can pick the delay of your choice. We'll turn it to 0% for now. We're gonna change this to note. I like to do a dotted eighth. I think dotted eighth is great. We will go all wet. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start turning this feedback upwards until we're pushing the limits. That was a little bit too much. Probably somewhere in there is pretty solid. Um, as the song goes, this can build up. If you notice it's building up too much, just turn it down a little bit. <laughs> But that's pretty good. So what we will do now is I'll move the limiter up and I need to add something to automate this. So to do this in FL Studio, I'll load up Fruity Balance Control, whatever DAW you're in, you'll probably go about this a different way. So I'll come here to Fruity Balance, create an automation clip. And now I can turn this up whenever I want to. Reroute the original audio here. Now we've got a feedback loop effect that you can automate however you like. You can fade it in, fade it out. You can drop it on the one. You can use just the tail of it. Doesn't matter. You use it however you would like it to your heart's desire. It is now there in a tool and an instrument ready and available for you to use at any point. Anything you want in this feedback loop, just route it to the feedback loop. That's it. It's that simple. Just remember anything you add to it, you will probably have to turn your feedback down. Um, if you do add something to it, keep an eye on that because you might come back to this thing flatlining at the top of the limiter. Um, because it's overloaded and you just kind of don't want that. So I hope that was helpful. Um, basic process for setting up a feedback loop. Limiter is always first. Protect yourself. Bring your limiter down to your current levels so that you can try and keep things from getting too loud compared to the rest of your mix. You don't want to hurt your ears. You don't want any surprises. Um, you know, just... Keep it controlled. After that, you'll turn your feedback down, get yourself set up. I like to use eighth notes, um, dotted eighth notes, and then start bringing that feedback up until 
you've got a little bit of a feedback loop kind of effect going. And boom, now that you've got a feedback loop, just automate it into your song. Hope this was helpful. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio and adios.